In this lesson, we're going to explore many of the different selection tools used to select portions of a drawing that are available in GIMP. We're going to use those selection tools to go ahead and color this sailboat. And by the way, this sailboat image is available on the download page, or the assignment page rather. And there's also an automobile. But if you want to find one of your own, let me show you how I do that. I just go to Google, and I'm going to go ahead and type in bicycle. And I get all kinds of hits, but I'm just going to go and choose images. And I get photographs and line art and all kinds of different stuff. So I'll, I'll go ahead and narrow it down with the tools. The first thing I'll do is choose labeled for reuse. Keep everything legal. And then under type, I'll pick line drawing. And if you want to, you can also choose black and white but that's not totally necessary. In any event, you get all kinds of different line art here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this unicycle. And as I preview it, notice how that there's a checkerboard pattern here. And the parts that are filled in are either black lines or filled in with white. The checkerboard signifies that is transparent. That, and that probably means that it's a PNG file. By the way, over here, you can see the image size that same transparency is available here. In other words, all that exists in this drawing is these black lines. There is no white or black or any kind of background, no pixels there whatsoever. Only PNG supports that. When I go back to this image, I can view the image. That's full size. And right click and save the image. or you can save it to your desktop, doesn't really matter. Now if I want to open up the Unicycle, I can just come up to File, Open, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about this dialog box for just a moment because mine undoubtedly looks different than yours. Recently used files are right here. This is my particular profile. If you want to add a shortcut like I've done over here on the left, I'm going to go ahead and go to my C drive, Users, Eric, and let's see, I'm using the OneDrive. So I highlight that, and then just go ahead and add it. And now I can come into OneDrive, GIMP, uh, let's see, Moodle Images, and there's the Unicycle. Now I was right this part in here hasn't been filled in but now we have it open and let's go ahead and talk about some of the different selection tools by the way you can customize this dialog box just about any way you want i can't quite remember what it looks like in the default but you should be able to find your c driver you can just use your desktop you can use a usb stick your google drive you know just about any folder that you regularly use now, before I get started with this, since I downloaded from the internet, I'm going to go into image here and come into mode, and it's indexed, which means this is just straight black and white. And I want to be able to use colors, so I'm going to change it to RGB, red, green, blue. Now, it doesn't look like anything changed, but now I have the ability to work with any of the millions of colors GIMP has to offer. This transparent background, though, is a little bit difficult to work with. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a white background on it. And to do that, I'm going to create a new layer right over here. And when the dialog box pops up, it gives me some choices. Elect to use the foreground color, which over here you can see is black. The background color, which you can see is white. I'm going to just go ahead and use white and click OK. And it covers the whole thing up. Now that's because the white layer up here in the layer dialog box is on top of the picture of the sailboat. Now if I want to move any of those layers, if I want to say example move this one up to the top, there's a little arrow down here and I just click on it and it moves it up. Or you can move it back down. But you can see that that's just a lot easier, a little bit more pleasing to see. And by the way, if your image is really small, if you're zoomed out, 
you can press the plus key to zoom in or the minus key to zoom out. I'm just going to come in under view, go to zoom, and fit the image in the window. It gives me the most workspace. But as I come in here and start to select some of these things, I'm going to have to be careful about making sure that my selections are proper, and so I'm probably going to want to zoom in. The first selection tool up here that I'll talk about is the rectangle select tool. And we're probably not going to use that on this image, but it does just what you would expect. It selects a rectangle shape. You've got grips in the corner here, so you can so you can pull it, get it just the way you want it, and that'll select those pixels. So now if I want to paint, and let's pick a contrasting color here, I'll just go ahead and pick red for my foreground color. I can paint inside here, but I can't paint out here because those pixels aren't selected. It's not really very useful for this particular task, but I wanted to show it to you. So I'll go Control Z to undo it. And now I'm going to come up and show you the Lips tool. And it's pretty much the same thing. And when I go ahead and click to start it, or start the selection, the rectangle selection disappeared. If I want to select more than one ellipse, or select an ellipse and a rectangle, I just hold down the Shift key and that'll allow me to add an additional selection. And now when I paint, and I'm going to make the brush bigger by holding down the left, excuse me, the right bracket key, which is to the right of the P on your keyboard. I'll hold it down and make the brush bigger here. Or I can make the brush bigger over here in the tool options. But lots of times it's better to be able to see it actually change size, but you can do it both ways. So now as I paint, nothing happens up here. It only paints in the areas with the active selections. Again, we'll do an undo. I'll come up under the select menu and select none. The free select tool allows me to trace any particular shape. And as I get towards closing it, a little yellow dot pops up and that tells me that my selection is watertight. Selection sets always have to be closed. They can't be, for example, in the shape of the letter C. I can add another selection, or excuse me, actually what I'll do is I'll just undo that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And if I want to select these pixels right in here, I can do that by kind of tracing along It's kind of hard to do with a mouse, a little easier to do with a tablet. And now I can come in and just paint that part right there. Notice my brush size stayed the same. It's enormous, but it worked for this. But that's, again, it's not really very effective. Sometimes that works great, sometimes it doesn't. But that's the free select tool. What would be more effective, and we're starting to get into the ones that have more power here, is the fuzzy select tool. And I can click on that, and if I click inside this region right here, it selects all of it. In other words, it notices the contrast between the black and the white, and so I get the region that I want there. If I want to select more than one, I can go through, and you see the marching ants tell me that it's selecting those areas. So that is one of my favorite selection tools. And again, I can come in and just paint those areas that are just selected. The next one is the color select tool. And with this tool, I, when I select it, I get a little cursor here and it wants me to select a color. Now the only colors I have in here are black and white. So you can see when I do that, it selects all the areas that are white. And that's not too useful for this, although if I wanted to paint everything red, I could certainly do that. But I might as well just change the color of the background red. That would have the same effect. 
Where it does come in handy is if I use the fuzzy select tool to go ahead and choose some of these parts of the sail. I want to hold down the shift key there. Notice the little plus icon that gets added by the way. I can go ahead and paint. And then later on, if I choose the fuzzy select tool to select this area up here, pick a different color, say a green, and paint up here. If I want to go ahead and just select the regions that are red and select them quickly, I can use the color select tool and when I click on this red, it just goes ahead and selects the areas that are red. It doesn't select the areas that are green. And so if I change my mind, I can come in and change those colors. Now I'm going to go back and do some undos here. There we go. And then just come up select none. The next selection tool is the scissor select tool. And that one's pretty good. I mean, probably not the, the best one for this particular line art coloring, but let's just go ahead and take a look at what it can do. I'm going to zoom in a little different way this time. I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and scroll with my mouse by just moving the wheel on it. And wherever your cursor is, so like if I want to zoom in on this fellow in the front, if I hold the cursor in that journal area, it'll zoom in on that. So I'm just going to pick this little panel right up here on the top. And using the scissor select tool, and you can see we're into quite a few pixels there. If we use the fuzzy select tool, that's what we get. It's not exactly perfect. So now I'm going to come in and add a point. I'm going to come down here because it's fairly straight. You can see that it really jumped. Now we can, we'll fix that in a moment. Let's see, come down along here. And when you mouse over, the icon changes. So that's now closed or watertight. But I want to add some points here and pull these down. I don't know why it's being quite so jumpy, but you can customize this. And in time, pretty much get it wherever you want by, by adding points. And at this particular point, I can like that. It's just fine for now. And if you hit the enter key, it goes ahead and turns it into the marching ants and makes it an active selection. Now, I probably missed a lot of spots along here. And so if I come in and paint, you can see that I didn't quite get it all. You got some white spots there. So there's a couple ways that I can address that. I can come back into the scissors tool here and change my mode from replacing to adding to. It's just like adding, holding down the shift key. Same result. And so I can come in and add some spots here. And I can just come out here anywhere. It doesn't really matter because I'm adding to the selection. And when I hit enter, did I not close it? Yeah, I didn't get it closed. There we go. Now when I hit enter, I've now got those pixels selected. Although I've got, you know, I'm going to be painting out here in this black area. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to undo that last scissors motion. And I'm going to come in.
and grow the selection right down here. Now I can sharpen it, I can shrink it, but in this particular case I just want to go ahead and grow it. And let's just try by two pixels. Oh yeah, that's better. So now when I paint, I get this area here. Now I still don't think that's as good as the fuzzy select tool, but if we zoom out here, you can see that once we deselect, it doesn't look so bad. You know, you can't really tell unless you're zoomed in really tight what's going on up there. We'll use the scissor select tool in some of our different exercises coming up where it works just a little bit better, where there's not quite as much contrast. Now before we start painting, I'm going to go ahead and select the sky to show you something. Notice how it picks this area of the sky, but it also picked these white areas down here. And that's because when we come in here closely, you probably didn't notice it before, but this area right here is not watertight. So there's a couple ways that we can address that. Probably the easiest thing to do is just to go ahead and paint a small line across here. So I will take and change my foreground color to black. Click on the paintbrush. It's pretty big, so I'm going to come over here to the size and take it all the way down to small as it will go. And I'm just going to draw a little line across there. So now, if I did that right, when I choose the fuzzy select tool, let's zoom out here, and reselect, you'll see that I now just have this area up here, up to the top of the mast. So now when I go in to pick my color here, there's several choices. I sort of like this palette and use it the most. So I'll just click on the, the eyedropper here and pick a color from that and we'll say okay for now. Grab our paintbrush tool, make it bigger, and paint the sky. So I'm going to go through at this point and stop and allow you to just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to make a second movie where I just go through and do the whole thing. So if you want to watch me go ahead and paint it the way I like, maybe I'll do the car. I'll do that one. And you can do your own or you can follow along with the car mouse click by mouse click. You'll probably discover some things that I didn't mention and and that's okay because with any of these projects there's a million ways to do it and as long as you end up with what you want in the end that's success in my book.